Good morning and welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living. Happy New Year. It's a great start to a new beginning and new days. It's a time when humanity has decided that it's a new year, so everything should be new. I'm all for it. Planet's just continuing on its path and goes right on around to the next thing and doesn't think much about it, but we do and we create this wonderful new beginning. So welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, where we teach you and tell you such is the nature of life that all it asks and all it wants is the opportunity to appear. You're the opportunity. So am I, and so it is, and you will continue to be. Most of what we teach and most of what we do is all about putting feet on that statement, on what it is to be life itself unfolding and expressing in a way that, that what we teach is allows you to do an even better job of living your life than you may have done before. Good ideas, good thoughts, inspirations to try something new, to move perhaps in a little different direction. And as we are stepping in now to, to a new year, it's a great time for that. So welcome and thank you for being with us. Whoever you are, whatever your, your pronouns, however you understand yourself, all of that is, is part of the wonderful celebration of this tapestry of life that we all participate in. And so I'm so grateful that you choose to spend, to spend some time with us and that we have a chance to at least to have some connection with you, to, to let you hear how valuable we believe you to be, I know you to be, how much you are loved, and how much you are deeply appreciated just for being alive, if nothing else. But you're appreciated for much, much, much more as well. What we teach, what we do, is a whole lot around a, a, a set of principles and ideas. We don't ask you to sign on the dotted line and say, yes, I believe these, and they become some sort of uh, uh, liturgical credo. Not at all. But what we do is we share them so that we can decide on a day-to-day, week-to-week basis. Do I believe this or not? And if I did, would my life be better? Or if I don't, does it matter? That's all up to you, the individual. We don't, we don't try to tell you what to think or how. We do offer some ideas on how to think. So I'd like for you to hear now from some of our leadership, practitioners and board members, our Declaration of Principles. I believe. I believe. I believe in one God. One absolute power and first cause to all things. I believe that this power is perfect love. And creates out of a desire to express love. I believe all thought is creative and how I choose to think creates my personal experience. I believe in the unity of all life. And the immortality of the individual soul. Forever unfolding. I believe. I believe. I believe in the eternal goodness. The eternal goodness of God. The eternal loving kindness. And the eternal givingness of God to all. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. If you have questions about what you heard, those those principles that we that we teach and that we, we live very much from. You can find more information about them on our website, cslmidtown.org. You will also be having opportunities through the year, this year, to study some of them in a more in-depth way. And we'll be offering some seminars and workshops on those as the year progresses. So it's the new year. And I know at least one of you out there has been asked by somebody, maybe some nosy body, I don't know, what's your New Year's resolution? Well, I can tell you, I'm not going to tell you how to make one or what they should be or what they ought to be. But I am going to offer you an opportunity now to give some thought to, sometimes, you know, sometimes before you can go after something and affirm what's true and real, you need to just let go and release and be done with and clean house of those things which no longer serve you. You know, New Year's is a time in many cultures where this is the big 
spring cleaning, even though it's not spring, where you, you let go of what no longer serves you. We've just been through the fall season, which is when the planet, the northern, northern hemisphere at least, is in the process of letting go what no longer serves it. It sends the leaves to the ground and turns it into fodder for the next year. It lets go of those things no longer needed as the weather gets colder and the days have gotten shorter and the nights have gotten longer. So one of the things we like to do in our teaching and in our center is some kind of ceremonial release. A ceremony doesn't isn't the action that makes it happen. What really creates a release, a letting go, is done in consciousness. It's done in your mind. The ceremony is just an outward expression, which can add to and, and uh, actualize, make real, make solid those releases that you've decided to let go of. So I would invite you, if you have a moment, perhaps pause this in whatever form you're watching it so that you can take a moment and grab a piece of paper or your journal, although it's something that you don't mind just storing some of the paper so that you can put some thought to what am I letting go of? What am I done with? What could I leave behind in 2022? You know, there are a lot of things that come to mind. And people think of a lot of things when we talk about releasing and leaving behind. I'm leaving behind some resentments that I didn't know I had until recently when they began to bubble up from the past and I thought I was done with them. You know how that goes. You think you work something out. You think you're done with it. It's all over. And then suddenly... You find yourself in a situation where you find that you're upset or angry or disturbed or anxious. When you dig in that a little bit, you find out, oh, well, underneath that's an old resentment. A big part of letting go is forgiveness. Forgiving myself for holding on to some of those old resentments from a long time ago and, and letting it bother me still. So I'm letting go of some old resentments. I'm letting go of some instances in the past where something other than love seemed to be showing up. And I'm letting go of my own self-judgment for not already having let that go. So that's a part of what I'm going to release. And I invite you, if you think about some of those, take a moment and jot them down. Just on a scrap of paper. Or even if you don't have a pen or a pencil, it doesn't matter. You can you can do it with a just by impressing the idea of it into something and letting it go. I have some interesting paper here. It's, uh, it's called flash paper. Magicians use it. It's kind of cool and kind of fiery. So in line with what I just said, I'm going to let let go. I'm not going to name names because I want them to be gone. If I name them and you, they get recorded for history, then I'll have those people calling me and saying, why are you naming them? You know, not doing that. But I'm letting go my old resentments of individual situations, of places where I may have thought I was wronged or where I know I wronged someone else. And I'm letting go of the self-judgment that goes with all of that. And I release it into the nothingness that it came from. See, all those ideas come out of these false ideas that there's an us and them, that there's two things here, that there's two people in the room when there are two individual bodies in the room, but really there's only one humanity in the room. I'm letting go of that external image of duality and I'm letting it go back into the oneness it came from. Yeah. It's pretty exciting when you get a room full of people doing that. Don't try that with regular paper. You set something on fire. What else are you leaving behind in 2022? 
Oh, how about some fear? Leave behind some fear. Hmm. You know, they say that with with our fears, one of the, those things that makes us most fearful are the things we are afraid of. Often is exacerbated by our fear, not only of the thing happening or the event or the feeling or the idea, but it's the fear that it'll never change. Letting the fear that it will get always be the same or get worse. Hmm. What are you afraid of? Maybe some old fears from last year. Some fears that the coronavirus is going to go crazy again and you'll be in life-threatening situations you hadn't planned on. Fear of politics. Fear of what's happening in the world of power exchange, which isn't about real power at all, but which is about the power of governments and people over people. When the only real power is within us. So maybe there's some fear there. Or maybe there's some fear about your health. Maybe there's some fear that however, whatever may have gone on before is never going to stop. And it's just going to get worse. Some fear that you'll suffer. Some fear that the person you're having a struggle with in a relationship might leave you. When the reality is sometimes the person leaving you is the best thing that could ever happen for both of you. And sometimes finding a new way to connect is also important. But you've got to release the fear for that to happen. So I'm going to do that now. I'm going to release this fear that, that whatever is going on in my life would be better if I tightened down, held on, and tried to control it. I'm afraid of letting it go. I'm releasing that fear now into the nothing. And it's gone. Breathe with me. A nice breath. How about letting go of hatred? Hmm. Man, all right. do I have some history with that? You know, hatred is not the opposite of love. Because if something didn't matter to us, we wouldn't hate it. The opposite of love is apathy. Just not giving a crap one way or another. Perhaps what you feel when you walk past a homeless person on the street, when you feel nothing. You don't see them. You're not angry at them. You don't hate them. You just don't respond. So maybe hatred apathy, anything in my life that doesn't resemble love and loving myself and loving other people, I want to let that go. Yeah, how it makes me jump. <sighs> so think about limitations, both those which appear real and those which are really only in our minds. The things that we limit in our lives. The people that we limit. Hmm. I'm of an age where if I forget a name, I think, I'm, I think I've got Alzheimer's if I'm not careful. Silly, I don't. I'm not even demented yet. Maybe you see something you tell me about, but but it's those those things that that we just see as limitations when they aren't. Age is a state of mind, not a physical reality. Now my body's got some different opinions about that, but I don't. I know better. I know my vitality and my livingness and my excitement and my engagement in life. I'm looking forward to teen camp, for goodness sake, in a few weeks. So limitation, perhaps your limitation is because of some belief that you have about having been victimized or some actual physical experiences about that. If you're a woman, if you're gay, if you're lesbian, if you're, if you're a man, if you're any, you know, we can all 
feel limited by who and what we are and how we define ourselves if we're not careful. And we can let those ideas creep in that somehow because of who we are, we're less than we should be, less than we'd like to be. And so I invite you to let go. I invite you to release. And you know what yours are. So take a minute and think about that. Big breath in. Big breath out. And let's release limitations. Yeah. I feel lighter. And what is real and what is true is that when we release things and we let them go, when we have ideas that used to seem to make sense that don't anymore, and we just find new ideas, simply releasing is not enough. Because you leave a vacuum, you leave a gap in yourself and in your mind. And you know the saying, the universe, the universe abhors a vacuum. So something will rush in there to fill it. You decide you're never going to let your parents tell you what to do anymore. You're 55 years old. It's time to stop doing what they tell you. Hmm. Well, if you're not careful, someone else in your life will show up to fill that role real fast. And if you haven't healed whatever is within you that feels like you need somebody else telling you what to do, then the vacuum will be filled by someone else who's quite happy to do that. The world is full of folks who would much rather control other people's lives because they don't have to look at their own. Not naming anybody, but that's true. So as you've released all of this, we're going to listen to some music. And then we're going to talk about what do you fill the gap with? What do you replace? What do you put in place of those things that you have released? Join me, if you will, in a spiritual mind treatment, which is an affirmative prayer, which is, it just, which is designed not to change other people or to get God to change its mind or his or her or they or them's mind, but it's to change our mind, to be in alignment with the flow and the ideas of truth moving from the infinite into us and out into the world. So join me if you will. So I declare in this moment there's only one power, one light, one life, one expression of that life moving through each of us and out into the world. Each with our individual versions of that life, each with our individual expressions. And I know that whatever is expressing from within us out to the world is the very essence of goodness of life. It is the very idea that we have, the best ideas that we have of ourselves and of life. So if there are, so, so as I move into this time and this affirm, affirming time and this treatment, I recognize that I am no longer burdened by those things I have released. And instead I move into a time in my life of affirming and welcoming good of all kinds. I am open to receive the goodness that God has for me, that spirit has for me, that life has for me, the goodness of givingness, the goodness of, of joy, the goodness of prosperity, the goodness of health, the goodness of loving, wonderful, expansive relationships. Ah, the goodness of breath and life. the goodness of creative expression, the opportunities to give my gifts to the world and be paid for it in rich and wonderful ways. Ah, the goodness of prosperity. Seeing that flow of inflow and outflow of value and richness as I value myself even more than ever before, the infinite responds by valuings coming to me, through me, and out into the world. Ah, this thing called life is a rich and wonderful experience, and it is a great opportunity this year, moving into now, from this moment forward, 
to fully, joyfully, easily embrace all forms of good, to see past challenges or anything else happening that's in front of me, past the challenge, past the, the break, past the holding back into the goodness underneath and behind it all. I watch the world and life from a higher perspective that pulls me out of the duality of right and wrong and into this place of greater knowingness that all is well, that life is good, that God is in charge and that things are moving forward with ease and grace. And all of the shaking up is simply moving us towards a greater and greater expression of good. So as I step into this new year, I leave behind those things I've declared. I step forward into my new life experiences that I am now choosing by what I choose to think and believe. I'm grateful that I live in a universe with this kind of restart button that I can do in my mind at any time. So I'm grateful to myself. I'm grateful to my teachers. I'm grateful to everyone who has contributed to my life this year in any way. And I'm grateful as we move forward into the new, knowing I am supported by all of these years of support. I honor that all. I link to it with joy. I let this be the truth for me. And if you agree, say with me, and so it is. And so it is. Yes. You know, I was thinking about that business of who, who who we stand on, where we came from, why we're here. And it's kind of amazing when you think about it. I mean, we think we can get lost into thinking our life sometimes are just about who we are right now. And, and as kind of individual people, we're a certain age based on how long we've been around on the planet and running around the sun. And, and depending on all those other messages about individuality you know you may be like me think of yourself as a regional person a southerner and even though i'm a southerner i've lived most of my adult life elsewhere i was up there in yankee town for a long time in philadelphia loved that that was a great place to be been all around california denver colorado blah 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 blah, blah. but wherever i was i never lost this accent so I always got identified as a Southerner to some extent or another. And that wasn't a bad thing. So all that, but that's a narrow view of an individual, whatever that view is. When you take a breath and think a little bigger at this bigger, bigger phase of life, recognize that you stand, your physical being is built on billions of years of evolution you just you didn't just happen on whatever birthday you you had you're the result of billions of years of evolution growing from a tiny singular organism into all of this an actual body that's made up of more organisms than than any than individual cells. I mean, think about that for a while if you want to decide that you're an individual. You couldn't live without all those other organisms that live within you and that support and help your body be what it is to be. We stand on that that biological history. We stand on, on the consciousness history that goes back thousands and thousands of years. Consciousness of oneness. Talked about this last week, the peripheral, I mean, the perpetual philosophy that constantly, not peripheral, definitely not peripheral, perpetual that is in, in and underneath and behind all of the religious and philosophical movements that we've ever had. And it comes forward and comes forth. So you've got all those years of thoughts and thinking behind you. And because we are living in a consciousness of oneness and our consciousness is the location of the oneness in a great way. And it is where we experience it the most. And all of those ideas and thoughts, when you link to them, come in to support you and what you're thinking and feeling and believing and doing. And so we have released what's been in the past what we don't want to carry with us into the new year. So now I'm inviting you, what do you want to take? What are the intentions that you have for 2023? 
Now, nobody can predict what's going to happen in 2023. I think every year since 2020, we have learned that. There were lots of predictions going into 2020 about what that year was going to be, and we all know the answers to that. The world offered all of us a whole new experience, a reset in consciousness, some would say, a setback in health, others would say. But however you look at all that, we couldn't predict at all what 2020 or 2021 or 2022 were going to be. So I'm not asking you to predict anything. I'm asking you to set your your rudder or your sail or your direction for 2022. 23, sorry, you already did 22. You set that in, in motion and you, by declaring in your consciousness, in that truth, that mind, body, mind, health, mind, heart, part of you, what is it I want to give to the world in 2023? What is it I want to experience for myself? in this year? What am I willing to give myself to in order to experience it this year or in order to give it to? It's one thing to say, I want, I want, I want, I want. Kind of like a kid in the grocery aisle when suddenly there are all those things that they put right at the checkout counter to drive your kids crazy and drive you crazy because they're reaching for whatever they can get and get you to say yes to. Not that kind of getting, but the kind of thing are you committed to your life to, your time to, your energy to, your focus to, your mind to, your thought to, in order to be or to experience or to give. I don't even like the idea of doing them as a resolution. I'm resolved. The resolve will come with your day-to-day -day practice and your day-to-day -day movement. But you start, we start, we all start with an intention. And that grows to an affirmation. And that is what needs to replace all that stuff you released. Is to put intentions, affirmations in place of them. I'm releasing my fear and self-judgment. I'm releasing my self-judgment of the past. And of myself. And those people, what am I putting in place of it? I'm putting in place the idea of, of asking first, is this a loving expression I am doing and feeling in every experience I have with another person? What's love got to do with it? What's love got to say about this moment, this experience? The opposite of fear is faith. The opposite of fear is confidence. The opposite of releasing is affirming. So I'm inviting you to spend some time as you move into this new year. I know this today is a holiday. Well, take some time. Take a little while this afternoon and just write down. What are the things that you would like to affirm as being true and real for you this year? A fun way to do that is to think about your future self. Imagine your future self this time next year talking to you and saying, all right, Bob, let's talk about what you were going to do this year. Here's where we are. Let that future self tell you where you want to be in a year, what you want to be doing, who you want to be with. And then set it as an intention now, because the infinite knows nothing about time and space. It just knows what is. And what we declare into our consciousness is what is. It is the real great reality, the capital R reality, is what I declare in consciousness. So I'm going to affirm. I am loved. I have people in my life to share that love with. I have people who support me. And I support them. And there's a mutuality, a respect for each one's individual expressions, and yet a supportive, caring kind of thing happening. I affirm my spiritual body is perfect health and it informs every cell in my physical body to do and be the same. I affirm that I have great gifts to give in terms of thoughts and ideas and philosophy and sharing and guiding and working with other people and seeing the good behind the struggles that folks have and seeing the way through some of those struggles. 
And I am going to be giving that to more and more people as the year goes by. I affirm and set that sail, set that direction. And I'm willing to give my time, my energy, and my talent to it. And those are just examples for me. I want you to find yours, of course. What are your gifts? What are you willing to give? And I see myself as being more and more open to receiving good. I learned recently that asking for help, which was always hard for me, but it's still one of the hardest things to do. But by doing it, I started to receive more good than I have ever imagined. And once you start asking, you start receiving. And once you receive, you give, and then you ask, and then there's more, and then more, and more. And that's true in all forms of good. All forms of good, from money, to relationships, to health, to all of it. So you decide what those are. Jot them down. Take a minute. Draw pictures if you're better with that than you are with, with writing. Or or. Cut them out of a magazine and put them up on your refrigerator to remind you, this is my intention for this year. A lot of people like to choose one for the new year. But what's important is choosing. If you choose it, it's yours. If you kind of half-ass think about it, did I say that word? I did. It doesn't matter. It'll only just kind of half-ass come to you. But if you choose it and you say, I'm choosing this intention, I am choosing to affirm this truth for myself. The universe lines up. The events all around you line up because spiritual law always supports that. And it shows up. Get ready. As my first practitioner uh, that I ever worked with said to me, you've done the treatment now. We've done the treatment now. Fasten your seatbelt because it's going to go fast from here. And it did. Out of one career into another before I could spin around twice. And all with great success and ease. So I invite you. Decide. Choose. And choose wisely. Because you're wonderful. So am I. And so it is. Now let's hear from Vance. Right. So, Happy New Year, everybody. It's going to be a great 2023 with that awesome message to kick off the year from Dr. Bob. And I know if you're like me, we get spiritually fed by what happens here. Um, we're coming back live in person on the 8th. And if you're in the Atlanta area, please join us. We'd love to see you. And we're going to have um, some refreshments there. So it's kind of our, our giving to start the new year, kind of kickstarting it off. So you've got the opportunity to donate. I set mine up on a recurring basis. You can do that as well at cslmidtown.org slash or click on the donate button. It will take you into the system and allow you to set that up. You can do a one-time donation or set it up ongoing and if or click the QR code and it will take you right there as well. So if you would say with me, our affirmation of prosperity. I live in a universe of abundance. As I freely and joyfully give, I join the divine flow. And all that I share with life returns to me multiplied abundantly. And so it is. Now, back to Dr. Bob for some announcements. Thanks. Thank you, Vance. And here we are, launched into the new year. So this this January, we are doing something that we've done here in Atlanta for many years. And that is in the first four weeks, or the four weeks in January, in this case, it's going to be the second through the fifth. We're doing the four basic ideas of the science of mind. They're based on the, on the first four essays in the textbook called Science of Mind. I'll be doing a talk each week on each of them, uh, with the exception of the second week, which is uh, when the Reverend Angela will be with us. Reverend Angela Harmon will be here to uh, be a guest speaker on that that day. Um, And then at the end of January, we will launch into our prosperity class for uh, the next eight weeks. So join us, pay attention, keep up with us on the website and in our emails, and you will know what's happening and can choose how to 
Notice I said that word, choose how to continue and how to support us. So join me, if you will, in our closing affirmation. <sighs> yes, deep breath. I leave this place now knowing something better than I knew before. I go forth into the world with a heart full of love and a mind full of good sense. I look at the world in a greater way, knowing that I have within me everything I need, everything I need to create the life I desire. I give thanks for this understanding, and I am grateful for the spirit of life that lives through me. And so it is.